Here's what I get all the time from students. I don't need this for anything that I'm doing. Okay? And if you feel that way, fair enough. Okay? But realize that when we study chemistry, what we are studying is everything that is. Okay? So if you think that everything out there, out of everything that exists, none of it affects you, then I envy your simplicity. Okay? Um, the, what we're looking at here, what chemistry is, is it, we look at matter. Everything that is, everything that occupies space, everything that has mass. So basically everything that is. And we try to study it in a way to figure out how it works, why it works, and how can we harness it to our ability. How can we, that's the human way. How can we manipulate it to our advantage? Okay? Um, everything that you have, everything that, that you're touching, it's all based on that. I mean, if we didn't know chemistry, we couldn't make these tables that you're sitting at or the pop that you're drinking. And here's what's really mind-boggling. There's a few things that we talk about in here that's going to sort of blow your mind a little bit when we get into something called like quantum mechanics and that kind of stuff. But not only is everything made of atoms and molecules, but everything is constantly moving. Everything is in constant random motion. So, you know, if you take this table, for example, and you look at it, and you zoom in, and you start out here, and then you click it in, and you get a closer lens, and you get closer and closer and closer until you've zoomed in all the way down to the smallest possible level, the atomic level, and you see individual atoms with electrons buzzing around them, what you will see is these atoms are bouncing all around and bouncing off of each other. Now, it looks like that table is moving, right? Or, sorry, it looks like it's standing still. It looks like it's not moving, but it actually is. Not only that, but you right now, you're flying around at 1,000 miles an hour. Do you feel that? No, of course not. But you are. If the world suddenly stopped moving, it stopped spinning on its axis, you would probably, you know, you would feel that. You, you, would, you would go one way, sort of like you slam on the brakes in a car. It's all relative. It's all what your frame of reference is telling you and how to interpret it. Um, you've heard of Albert Einstein, I assume. You can't live on the planet without knowing Albert Einstein, right? He talks about this thing called relativity and how it's all about, you know, uh, how fast or, or how you interpret your situation based upon where you're standing. I'll give you a little, hint, a little example, and then we'll, we'll move on past this. But let's say, um, and I'll come back to this in quantum mechanics, but let's say that I'm on a train, okay, and you're, you're sitting back there, and let's say it's, you have the ability to watch me. You lock in on me. As I come into your, to the left field of your vision, you see me sitting in that train car. And I'm holding a golf ball, let's say. And as I'm riding on this train, I can't do the, the fluid walk or whatever, but as I'm riding on this train, I throw this golf ball up. It's up in the air. It's coming back down, and I catch it. Right? According to you. What shape was the path that ball just traveled, according to you? Think about it. Watch only the ball. Okay? Imagine me on a train. I'm holding the ball right here. I throw it up. And then this much time passes to where I land here, or I'm traveling to this point before I catch it. If you were just watching the ball, what would that ball look like? What would the path look like? An arch, right, from your perspective. Think about it, right? I started over here. I threw it up. As it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. Look at you, from where you're standing, it's making an arch, and it's coming back down. How does it look like from my perspective? Straight up and down. Who's right? Where did the ball travel? Did it travel in an arch, or did it travel straight up and down? It's all relative. It's relative to how you view it and where you're standing. Okay? Just like right now, you say you are moving absolutely, and I believe it for some of you, but you're moving at absolutely zero miles per hour. Okay? But no, you're not. You're traveling at 1,000 miles per hour. Which one's right? Well, it's all relative. So taking that into consideration, <coughs> you start thinking about what life is, and you start thinking about atoms and molecules, realize that you know, the same carbon atoms and the same oxygen atoms and the same hydrogen atoms, the same you know, other whatever else is present in this pop, the same atoms that make up that pop arranged in a certain way could be extracted. I could, for example, we know that there's water in that pop, <clears throat> right? All the stuff that's dissolved in the water, that's the solvent for this. I could pull out all the, the, the water molecules, H2O molecules, separate them, and now I have pure water. 
I have two different things. But see how they were so connected, right? I could take all the oxygen that's locked up in the water molecules and the CO2 molecules, extract it, and make pure oxygen that we can breathe. Um, I could, those same, same carbon atoms, those same hydrogen atoms, those same oxygen atoms that are in that are the ones that are in my body. So the difference between all of us and between the different states of matter from a scientific or from a chemical biological perspective, I'm leaving theology out of this. Okay, let's, let's, I'm just going to focus on the one side of it right now. From that perspective, the only difference between us is how our atoms are arranged, right? There's no difference between the atoms that are present between you and me. It's a matter of how many of them are there and how are they stacked, how are they arranged, and how are they reacting proportional to one another, you know, each of these systems. So in that manner, you can see how everything is related. The energy affects all matter, and we are the, made of the same constituents of all matter, okay? So if you tell me that chemistry does not impact your life and anything that you do, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. Now, does it mean that you have to know chemistry in order to succeed at your job and the specific tasks that you're being trained to do? Of course not. But like I said, my goal for this class is not that. My goal is that you think of the world differently when you're out of this and you appreciate things a little bit more. Okay? All right. I just covered several slides if you think I haven't started. Um, <clears throat> I'll skip over some here in a minute. But first of all, here's one thing that bugs me. Um, I told you that you know my, my graduate work is in um, uh, mostly biology stuff, uh, molecular biology mostly. Um, but my doctoral work is actually in religious philosophy and ethics. So this makes you know an interesting academic potpourri for me. It's, it's, it's a lot of different things to explore. But here's what here's what I've learned and here's what bugs me about uh, about I guess people in, in general. Not that I hate. Some of you might relate, though, right? Sometimes people just bug you. Um, no, but one of the things that, that, that bothers me is people who will take a position on something. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm not getting to the big ones. You can, you can certainly count the big ones. But they'll take a position on something and say that they think this is right or this is wrong. But truthfully, they haven't thought all the way through the issue. They haven't. Not only that, you know, not just for moral issues, but just understanding in general. People will think that they, is, they, and they make these assumptions that they think is true and they think is not true. And if you ask them why, they can't tell you why. What's their answer? Just because. It's obvious. You know? Like, for example, if, if Bridget's sitting here and I walk up to her and I just smack the snot out of her. I just start whacking her right there. And then she falls down and then I kick her while she's down and I take a chair to her head. <laughs> is that a right thing to do? Based upon anybody, uh, any civil moral code of conduct, is that, is that something that can be condoned? Of course not. Why? Can you give me a logically defendable reason as to why that I can't talk my way out of and I can't say at some point you have no evidence for what you say? You could say just because it hurts somebody. So what? We do things that hurt people every day. You know, verbally, physically, it doesn't matter. You know, is it, is it because I'm going to go to jail? Well, maybe, but somewhere else I wouldn't go to jail if I did it. Well, it's not accepted by cultural norms in this country. Okay, so let's go to China. Let's go, well, not China. I'm not picking on China. I shouldn't have said that. Let's go to some nation X where it's okay to do this. Okay? Um, and then I beat her and kick her there. Then is it wrong? You know, it gets pretty, mu pretty muddy when we start thinking about things like that. And I, I don't like it when people say, just because. Now, I know that there's no such thing as, as, as ultimate truth in the sense that you can just explain everything away. I understand that. But there comes a point when you need to be able to dive a little deeper. Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Uh, you've got to think about it. You've got to th things are not as black and white as most people would like to make them. It's easy for us to make them that way because it requires no thought and requires no soul tormenting. It just, we just make this decision and on with our life. Um, but what you will see is that it's not quite that easy if you really stop and think about it. Um, and I, I say this all as a setup to 